Delayed by the storm of the century, the United Nations is commemorating today World Holocaust Memorial Day for the tenth time. The President of Israel, Reuven Rivlin, will officially kick off the day with a very fascinating list of speakers. I would like to extend a special welcome to His Excellency Mr. Reuven Rivlin, President of the State of Israel. He is a <laughs> he is a vital and sometimes lonely voice for tolerance in troubled times. We are honored to have him with us. Welcome, Mr. President. And shalom. 70 years ago yesterday, the Soviet army liberated the Auschwitz-Birkenau, a death camp, ending the nightmare within. I visited the camp in November 2013. I saw the full machinery of murder, the railway platform where the infamous selections were made, the barracks, that held the Jews, Roma, Sinti, non-Jewish Poles, Soviet prisoners of war, dissidents, disabled persons, and homosexuals. And finally, the ovens, where human beings were turned to ashes. I was especially moved by the displays of photographs and films of European Jews, Jewish life before tyranny took hold, family meals, weddings, and other rituals, performances by the singers and actors who enlivened the cities in which they lived. We can still feel the pain of all that was lost and destroyed in a fringe of cruelty. The scale of the crime remains as shocking to this day. As we hear the poignant accounts of survivors, we are called to reflect on the root causes of such unspeakable atrocities. We have a collective responsibility to draw the lessons of the Holocaust and pass them on to present and future generations. When the General Assembly proclaimed International Day in 2005, member states reaffirmed that the Holocaust will forever be a warning to all people of the dangers of hatred, bigotry, racism, and prejudice. In this regard, I commend the work of the Holocaust Outreach Program, which celebrates this year its 10th anniversary. Through its global network of partners, the program has contributed to raising awareness of the history of the Holocaust among younger generations. Excellencies, distinguished guests, 70 years ago, as the world was coming to grips with the full magnitude of the horrors of the Holocaust, the United Nations was founded to rid future generations from the scourge of war. We have a duty to ensure that such tragedy as the Holocaust never happens again. Your Excellency, Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, His Excellency, Mr. Dennis Anthony, Vice President of the General Assembly, survivors, honorable members of the General Assembly, Your Excellencies, 
ladies and gentlemen. I stand before you at a time of great tension in our region. My heart and my thoughts are with my people in the state of Israel. Terrorism does not distinguish between blood. In this war of all of us, all the nations, united countries of the free world must form a united form. Ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, we mark today the International Day of Commemoration in memory of the victims of the Holocaust. Seventy years since the Red Army unlocked the gates of the camp of death, Auschwitz-Birkenau. This day was fixed in the United Nations calendar at the initiative of Israeli former Foreign Minister Silvan Shalom. This house has now been marking this day for a decade, year after year, with the commitment to preserve the memory of the Holocaust and its victims. Thank you. Seventy years ago yesterday, Red Army troops liberated the Nazi concentration camp at Auschwitz. Months later, on April 4, 1945, American troops marched into Ordruf concentration camp. Before fleeing the camp and forcing nearly 12,000 prisoners on a death march to Buchenwald, the Nazis made prisoners dig up the bodies from mass graves and burn them in a huge pyre in order to destroy evidence of the killing. But as United States General George Patton wrote when visiting the camp a week later, quote, they were not very successful in their operations because there was a pile of human bones, skulls, charred torsos. Visiting Ordruf with General Patton, General Eisenhower, ordered all residents of the nearby German town of Gotha to be brought to the camp. The people of Gotha live so close that they would have even seen the smoke from the massive pyre and perhaps even taken in its smell. They were made to confront the horrors that had been perpetrated so close to where they lived. When we come together to retell the story of the Holocaust, we rightly lionize the heroism of liberators like Soviet troops who took Auschwitz or the Americans at Ordruf. We marvel at the immeasurable perseverance and humanity of the survivors and the incalculable loss. Will we ever understand how great of the millions killed? And we are revolted by the unspeakable evil of the perpetrators, which even today retains its power to shock us to our very core. But in our retelling, we also must tell the story of people like the residents of Gotha, bystanders who knew what was happening, but who failed to act. And we must also speak of people whose seemingly trivial, routine, daily acts helped enable the Nazis to kill more than six million Jews as well as countless homosexuals, Roma, and others. Consider the trains that carried the victims to the camps. For those trains to run, tickets had to be bought. Jews were often charged for the one-way trips carrying them to their deaths with the exception of children under four who rode for free. Their rates were often negotiated by bureaucrats from the official travel bureau. 
If the Jews numbered more than 400, at times they received a discount. And those trains had to be driven by Reichsbahn conductors who knew what or knew who they carried. Those trains had to be maintained by engineers, cleaned by workers who scrubbed the blood and other human waste from the empty cars. Those trains had to pass through countless cities and towns along their journey and sometimes stop in their stations. And in communities across Europe, so many people, so many people watched passively as their Jewish neighbors were forced onto those trains, just as they saw that those Jewish neighbors never returned. We know that the Holocaust could not have been perpetrated without the vile hatred of the executioners who manned the gas chamber and guard towers and the gallows. But we also must remind ourselves that six million Jews could not have been killed without the complicit passivity of residents of towns like Gotha or the routine acts of people like the workers of the Reichsbahn. If we are to live up to the promise of never again, and we must, we have to recognize the role that these bystanders played in the Holocaust. People who somehow convinced themselves that they did not know or they were powerless to do anything. As a third generation, along with the Gedenk movement, it is my duty to pass the flame of awareness and remembrance and keep those stories relevant for today's young generation. We, the Gedenk movement, are the voice of the young generation, and we utilize creative campaigns and artistic outlets to promote tolerance and to make sure that the world will never forget. I will now perform an original composition that I titled, Never Forget. Why should we remember the Holocaust? It is a good question, and one that we must discuss openly if we are to engage all people of all ages with Holocaust commemoration. The Holocaust was the murder of six million individual Jewish men, women, and children. It is therefore an intensely human tragedy. We must not forget that the attempted destructions of Europe's Jews caused incalculable damage and grief, which is still felt today. I recently discovered, completely by chance on holiday in Berlin, that I too had lost a family member in the Holocaust. There is a part of my history, of my ancestry, that until then I was totally disassociate, disassociated from and unaware of. This led me to realize how voids caused by the eradication of whole communities and families has ramifications worldwide. In remembering the Holocaust, we acknowledge and contemplate this huge loss. Mine is the last generation who will have the opportunity to speak to survivors of the Holocaust. My contemporaries and I will therefore be instrumental in passing on their memories and have a special responsibility to ensure that the legacy of these survivors endures. As I stand here before you today, 70 years later, the wounds and immeasurable pain still remain in the depths of my being. For in the ashes of Auschwitz, the hope of mankind was extinguished. In truth, Auschwitz signifies the failure of 2,000 years of Western civilization. Not only people died in Auschwitz, but the idea of humanity had vanished. So for us, the last survivors, surviving witnesses, 
the message is not to forget, not to forget anything, and also that human life is sacred and that we all must do everything in our power to preserve and prevent future major tragedies like the one that befell my people. As I stand here before you, I'm reminded of the days when the Jewish people paid with blood for the world's ignorance and indifference. Those days are over, never again. No more than ever, there are those who claim that Holocaust in no, is no more than a myth. It is an imperative, therefore, to make sure that the world never forgets what happened, because there are some who would like to be it repeated. I would like to thank the United Nations for this significant resolution it passed, making January 27 of each year an international day of commemoration of the Holocaust. This fills our hope. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General, for allowing me to share my story with representatives of so many nations. Thank you all for listening to me. for being with us today. On behalf of the United Nations, I now declare the exhibition open. Thank you.
how important and significant is it to have an exhibit like this at the UN today? I think it's very important because in this exhibition we ask the visitor to ponder upon two things. One of them, like it's written on the panel, is how was it humanly possible? And the other one, we want the, the visitor to think what is the relevance of what he sees in this exhibition on those 30 panels to these days, to his life and to what's happening all around Europe and the world. So we believe that, well, at least I hope, that uh, they will have some understanding thoughts uh, that will uh, afflict them nowadays. With the rising of anti-Semitism in Europe these days, you know, all of a sudden the question how is it humanly possible is almost like, has no one learned anything? Oh, well, that's a difficult question. I um, don't know exactly how to answer it, but, well, we are trying, we are trying to do our best. I mean, 70 years after the Holocaust, the, the Holocaust survivors are slowly passing away and we feel that we need again and again to talk about the subject and uh, this this is actually one of the reasons we decided to produce now this exhibition and commemorate 70 years of uh, the end of World War II and the liberation of Auschwitz. Uh, we need to keep on talking about the subject and just like Ruby Livlin said earlier, it's not only about the, the, the anti-Semitism and the Jews, it's all about all that's happening around the world. So we hope that, again, everyone will take something from this exhibition that is going to be relevant to him and the atrocities he sees during his life, no matter if it considers the, the, the Jews or uh, a Muslim or someone else. Now, as, as, uh, as you said, 70 years have passed. Most people who were part uh, and even were survivors are passing away. And Yad Vashem has dedicated itself to the memory of the Holocaust. How do you continue doing this with no living survivors or very little living survivors among us? This is probably a very different task than when you have people who actually can be there and, and testify. Yeah, well, uh, we have uh, an archive of testimonies, so we can still keep using the archives of testimonies. And there is the International School for uh, Holocaust Studies in Yad Vashem, and uh, many teachers come all over the world, and they're being taught about the subject in Jerusalem. And later on, they return to their countries, and they know how to, te to continue teaching the subject to the young pupils of these days. How significant and important is this that the UN, uh, not very pro-Israel, pro-Jewish organization, is holding this event? You're talking to a Holocaust survivor. Actually, on January 14th, 1945, I was liberated by the Red Army in Budapest. So I don't need any exhibit. I'm an eyewitness. I experienced hell. Uh, the beast of man, brutality, hunger and everything. Uh, but I was very uh, active t 10 years ago, because I'm very much involved in the United Nations. I served as an ambassador of the U.S. at the U.N. to institutionalize Holocaust remembrance, because every day Holocaust survivors leave this earthly scene. Someone has to carry on the message because it's a very relevant message. Um, civilization is being threatened, even today, by those who want to destroy civilized life. Uh, so uh, this is a lesson not only for the Jewish people. You know, when I uh, was liberated, I made a promise. I was not better than the one and a half million children who didn't make it. I made a promise to God. If I, you kept me alive, I'm going to devote my energies throughout my lifetime to make sure that what I experience, what my people experience, will never happen to any other people. And this is why uh, in Srebrenica, uh, two years ago, I was the first non muslim leader to speak because I could identify. I saw 50,000 people mourning, 527 DNA identified. I've seen mass graves. 
I've seen the brutality that man is capable of. So I think the institutionalization of the Holocaust remembrance is critical as a message for humanity. What you saw, I think, today by the Secretary General, the President of the State of Israel, and this exhibition today in Yad Vashem, I think the most important thing that we should all learn is how important it is on an educational level to educate the world, for us to remember, always remember, and educate the young generation for tolerance, for better understanding, and to really be able to look at each other in a humane way. And if this is the message that came out today from the United Nations, we will all be united in trying to preserve the values and our way of life that we all cherish. Signing this guest book in memory of my family who has perished in Auschwitz, I can proudly say that I am a third generation Holocaust survivor. I am living proof the perseverance of the Jewish people has won. Hopefully, we will never have to ask the question, how was this humanly possible ever again? From the World Holocaust Commemoration Day at the United Nations in New York, I'm Ron Jacobson. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS, the Jewish Broadcasting Service, with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the JBS homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM, to GEM, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.